A common request I get from traders wanting to learn PineScript is how to use higher time frame indicator values as filters for their trading systems. The good news is this is pretty easy to do. And in today's video, I'll show you how. On my chart right now is a very simple example script. The strategy we're using today is not important because the code I'll show you today can be added to any of your existing trading systems just by copying about three or four lines of code. But what you see on my chart right now is a higher time frame moving average. This up the top here is just a colored ribbon to show me when my trading conditions are met. So when this ribbon is red, the script is not taking any trades. And when it's green, we are allowed to buy. So for today's video, this is just a long only system just to demonstrate how to reference higher time frame information in your systems. Now there's a second higher time frame indicator value we are referencing in this script, and that is an RSI value. So we're referencing the daily EMA, 200 day EMA, and the daily five period RSI. So the script is buying this market when price is trading above the 200 day moving average and the five day RSI is below 30 and we're on a one hour chart. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the source code and I'll show you how the script works and how we're referencing these high time frame indicator values. So we have a strategy script here. I've set my initial capital to 10,000 US dollars and we don't actually need the default quantity value because I override that in our entries. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, the next thing I do is I import my Zen library. This is a publicly available uh, PineScript library that contains several um, quality of life utility functions that just make coding a little bit easier. We're going to use it today to detect uh, candlestick patterns. If I type in zen.control space, here is all the functions available in this library. And today we're gonna to be using bullish engulfing candles. This function contains a bunch of checks that will detect bullish engulfing candles on my chart without having to write out too much code. I wanna to keep today's lesson as concise as possible. And the lesson is not about candlestick patterns. I have plenty of lessons on the channel about that. Um, so today we are just going to move on to our user inputs. So we only need three user inputs today, an EMA length, an RSI length, and a time frame, which is going to be the one day chart by default. But of course you can change this setting to any time frame. However, the code we write today will only work on a time frame below the one you select here or equal to or below. So this will work on the daily chart, but if we go to two days or above, it will not work because referencing lower time frame information is a completely different can of worms in PineScript. Uh, there's a video about that on my channel if you're interested, but be warned it is quite a complex subject. So now that we have our user inputs, let's define a custom function that is going to get higher time frame information without repainting. Now I've covered repainting on the channel in the past. I plan to do another video on that soon. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you're interested in learning about the behaviors of repainting, the dangers and how to avoid it. Uh, but this custom function we're using today looks scary if you've never used a custom function before, but I'll break it down. It's quite simple. First, we need to give the function a name. So I've given it the name F underscore for function and then NRP, is just an abbreviation of non-repainting and then security. And then this function takes one parameter, one input parameter, and that is going to be the expression we want to retrieve from our higher time frame. So to get a higher time frame price value, indicator value, volume, any of that data, we need to use the request.security function. Now the first parameter this function takes is a ticker ID, a symbol. So ticker ID will pass in the current market I'm on and the current broker I'm using to retrieve this price information. The next parameter this function takes is a time frame. So in this case, that's going to be the one day chart or time frame. Then we have our expression. EXP is short for expression, and that is just a code expression that we want to retrieve from the one day chart. So that could be a closing price, it could be volume, or it could be an indicator value. Today, we are going to obviously be using indicator values. Now this code here, is what eliminates repainting from that higher time frame. If I bring up the documentation for this function, here is a brief description of what repainting is. The reason we write our code the way we have is to avoid differences on historical and real time bars. So the code we are using will only return a value from the higher time frame on the bar after it completes. So it will not retrieve real time higher time frame information because if the RSI goes oversold today before the market closes, there's no guarantee that at the end of the day, it will still be oversold. So we want to be operating our trading systems based on confirmed indicator conditions. And so on today's trading price action, we want to be referencing yesterday's higher time frame indicator values. 
So what was the RSI value on yesterday's bar on the daily chart? This code here will ensure that we do not get a situation where our system takes trades on historical price data that it doesn't take on real-time data or vice versa. We want our system to be consistent on real-time price as well as historical price. That's what this code here does. So now that we have a non-repainting security function, by the way, you can copy this code into any script and pass in any expression. As I mentioned, open, high, low, close, volume, indicator values, and this will work in any script. So it's probably worth either bookmarking this video or copying this code into a notepad and saving it if you reference higher time frame information frequently, at least until you memorize this uh, syntax. So now that we have our non-repainting security function, the next thing to do is to get the expressions that we want to pass into our higher time frame security function. So in this case, that's going to be an EMA value and an RSI value. So these two lines of code will get the current time frames EMA value and RSI value. So if I plot these onto the chart, let's just plot the EMA for now. Um, this is going to give us the one hour 200 bar EMA. But if we pass EMA CTF into this function, we will now be getting the 200 day EMA drawing over the one hour chart. So hopefully you can see now where we're going with this script. Uh, the next thing to do is just get our higher time frame indicator values without repainting. So to do that, I have two new variables here that are identical to these, except that we're passing these values into our non-repainting security function expression. And so now we're getting our higher time frame EMA and our higher time frame RSI value. So that's essentially it. With these few lines of code um, and maybe some user inputs, you can add these higher time frame indicator values into any indicator, any um, strategy script that you write. And we can now reference these as market conditions. So to wrap up this video, let's enter our trades and exit our trades. To do that, I'm just going to use really simple entry and exit criteria here. This lesson is not about creating a profitable trading system. There's plenty of videos like that on my channel and in the mastery course, and I will cover new profitable trading systems in the future. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But for today, these are our entry and exit criteria. So our buy condition is that the current price, closing price of the current bar is greater than our higher time frame EMA. And in addition to this, we need the higher time frame RSI value to be below 30. So we need the RSI oversold, the five day RSI oversold, and the one hour bar trading above the 200 day EMA. So I separated these to make it easy to read. We could combine all of these into one line, but I like to make my code as intuitive as possible to read. And so I've separated these into two conditions. We have our profit, our take profit condition, and our stop loss condition. The take profit condition is very simple. I don't recommend trading this system. Uh, in a moment, you'll see that it actually shows promise. It's actually um, profitable on several Forex pairs, but I wouldn't recommend trading this, at least not without fleshing it out a bit more. It's a little bit too simple of a system, uh, but it just goes to show that sometimes simple can work just as well as complex, because as you'll see at the end of this video, we'll go over some uh, Forex pairs and I'll show you how this script performed. Seems to like yen pairs for whatever reason. Uh, but anyway, our profit condition is a bearish close, so a candle that closes lower than it opened, and the closing price must be above our average position price. So because we're only trading one trade, we're not pyramiding in the system, this position average price will just show us our entry price for our long trade. So as long as we get a bearish close above the price that we entered our trade, that is a profit condition exit. And then our stop loss condition is simply if price closes below the previous bars low. So now that we have our uh, entry and exit criteria, our conditions. I'll copy in this final block of code and break it down before we wrap up this video. So here's our entry code. So here we're only trading long entries. Uh, perhaps some homework for those of you who are newer to PineScript and want a challenge might be to add in the sell conditions. So you would just flip most of these operators around. If you're looking for a short condition, you want the close to be below the EMA and the RSI value to be above uh, 70 or whatever you prefer. And you'd wanna flip all of these conditions, copy this code and convert it to short uh, trades. But for today's lesson, we'll just keep this long only to keep things simple. And all we do here to enter a long trade is we check that our buy condition, Boolean conditions are met and that we have a bullish engulfing candle. And again, I'm just using my Zen library to get this code. The library is open source. So if you wanna see how I detect these bullish engulfing candle patterns, you can hold down control and click on the Zen keyword here and the source code will be uh, below here somewhere. If these conditions are met, we enter a long trade. 
Now, there is one line of code here that I had to add because yen pairs have a much higher pip distance than non-yen pairs. So if we were to trade 100,000 units, which is one standard lot, the system has a fixed lot size for every trade. Just to keep things simple, I don't recommend this money management style. You should really adjust your position size based on your account balance and your risk. But for today's example, we're keeping things simple. 100,000 units on a yen pair is very different to 100,000 units on a US dollar or Euro dollar pair or something like that. So this little line of code here just checks, is the current symbol's currency yen? If so, our position size, our QTY parameter should be set to 1,000. Otherwise, if this is not a yen pair, set the position size to one standard lot or 100,000 units. Then we enter long using the strategy.entry function. And then here are our exit conditions. If our profit condition is met, we close all trades. We give it the trade comment of take profit. So we know uh, visually we can look at our chart and see which trades were closed for profit and which trades were closed for our stop loss condition. And then we just draw the information to our chart. We're plotting the higher time frame EMA and the RSI value. I've set display to display dot status line on the RSI value so that we don't have the RSI value drawing over price action because it doesn't make sense to have that on this particular script. And then here is our ribbon code. So this is just drawing squares and it's changing the color of these square shapes based on whether our buy condition is met. If I save my code here, we now have our ribbon. But if I go back a bit here, here we have a bunch of trades. Um, you can see that our ribbon is green up here. So the RSI is oversold on the daily chart and we're still trading above the 200 day EMA. And so we can take long trades. You can see our trade labels here. So this trade closed for a loss, a stop loss, because this bar closed below the previous bars low. Same with this trade. This trade was a profitable trade. We entered long and then we got a bearish close above our buy price. And that will do it for today's lesson. I hope you found this interesting. As always, the source code to the script will be in the pinned comment below. You can copy this code, play around with it, and let's have a quick look at how this performed on some currency pairs. So again, I wouldn't recommend trading this. This is not trading advice. This is just coding examples. Uh, but here we have 72 trades, 20% return. Uh, this isn't taking into account commissions. That's important to mention. That will definitely affect your performance metrics, same with slippage, which is a big issue in Forex. Uh, but on these higher time frames, one hour chart and above, it's not that big a deal. The reason why I didn't include commissions in this script is because one, it's not the point of today's video and two, commissions vary from broker to broker. So it's up to you to figure out what commission structure your broker charges and input that information into this box here. You may also want to experiment with slippage, but if you're on a one hour chart or above slippage, becomes less and less of an issue. Anyway, let's have a quick look through some of these markets. It's not going to be profitable on the majority of these pairs, but you can see that uh, there is some promise here. I mean, even on Aussie CAD, we have a 62% win rate. The sample size is tiny, but just goes to show that you don't have to have a really complex system to find an edge in the markets. Just simply waiting for the higher time frame conditions to align. So short-term RSI value being oversold, while price is above a moving average, if you made a more complex entry criteria, there might be potential to a system like this. Uh, but anyway, you can see that it does seem to favor yen pairs. Nearly all of the yen pairs here uh, show a positive equity curve. Uh, pound yen had a 57% return, but this equity curve is pretty horrible and pretty trash until recently. Uh, but yeah, you get the idea. That will do it for today's lesson. Uh, thank you to the trader who wrote in to suggest this lesson. In last week's newsletter, uh, unfortunately, I had a really sore neck, so I couldn't code or do a video last week. But I did send out an email asking for suggestions for video content, and you guys really uh, provided. As you can see here, I had over 50 email replies suggesting new video content. So thank you, everyone, for that. I have a lot more content planned. We're going to start branching out into more broad trading system uh, content such as system development theory backtesting techniques and i also plan to revisit pine connector soon so make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and i'll speak with you in the next lesson thanks for tuning in i appreciate you guys and good luck with your trading take care